Hello, I'm Pastor Chris Wobble from Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church here in Fargo, North Dakota. And we are continuing our Lenten service, Deliverance from Danger. Human anger means Christ's compassion in the Passion. And I'd like to, if I may, share our theme of the day with you. Although Judas followed Jesus as a disciple and heard and saw much that our Savior taught and did, the disciple judged himself unworthy of forgiveness after betraying our Lord. Some sins might seem unforgivable in our eyes, but Jesus assures us that the forgiveness he came to win is more powerful than our internal self-criticism, the devil's torments, and the law's accusations. We do well to remember that God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We pray that God would grant us faith that believes even our deepest and most awful sins have been paid by our loving Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you confessing our anger against you and toward others. Like Judas, we often direct our anger inward against ourselves. We falsely believe that we are beyond your steadfast love and faithfulness to us. We convince ourselves that you cannot fully love us or accept us. Regret, remorse, and anger can lead us to separate ourselves from you and your church. Give us assurance that all manners of sins are forgiven in Christ, even self-anger, self-harm, and suicide. Lead us to repentance. Forgive us and deliver us from the danger of human anger. Our Lord experienced extreme expressions of anger against him. Jesus was delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be helped by it. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. For his sake, God forgives you all your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God for his compassion shown to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with Psalm 37, verses 23 through 29. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever leading generous, lending generously, and his children become a blessing. Turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. The children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteousness shall inherit, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, our sins often pain us, causing tremendous regret, regret and guilt. Point us toward your complete pardon in Christ, and grant us peace in your forgiveness and mercy. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for this evening comes from Matthew's Gospel, the 27th chapter, beginning with the third verse. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasure because it is blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set, 
by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you ever lie awake at night, tossing and turning, reliving some sin or some mistake that you committed from your past? And maybe it's not so much a sin of commission, something that you've done, but a sin of omission, something that you've left undone. And you pose the question, if I had just done this, or if I had just done that, or if I had done things differently, would things have turned out better? Have you ever become so frustrated with yourself that you think about or actually commit self-harm of some kind? Whether that be emotional, psychological, or even physical. One of the disciples, one of Jesus' chosen twelve, did just that. Continuing beautiful Savior's Lenten theme of the danger of human anger and Christ's passion in compassion in the passion. Tonight we look at Judas, and Judas Iscariot is perhaps one of the most tragic figures in human history. Think about Judas himself was with the Lord during his public ministry. He's connected to Christ for several years and witnesses numerous miracles, witnesses Jesus' teaching and preaching among the people, yet ultimately betrays the Lord. And wrought with guilt, Judas takes his own life, more than likely convinced that he could never be forgiven. Explanations abound as to why Judas betrayed Jesus in the first place. We know that his betrayal fulfilled the scriptures. We know that Satan influenced his behavior and even possessed him to do this unthinkable deed. Judas did not betray God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, his master, his rabbi, though simply out of the blue. There were warning signs before this happened. Early on in John's Gospel, Jesus calls, and he doesn't identify which one, but he says to the disciples, one of you is a devil. One of you is a devil. And he referred to Judas, of course. And even though Judas was numbered among the disciples and was allotted his share in this ministry, he was more interested in earthly riches. In John chapter 12, for example, six days before the Passover, Jesus comes to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. And Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with Jesus at table. And Mary took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his, his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Judas Iscariot said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And then scripture tells us, Judas said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus' response to Judas, why did, why did she do this? Was, leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. This, along with many other exhortations, warnings, and proclamations, Jesus gave to Judas. As they celebrate the Last Supper and the First Lord's Supper, our Lord says this, I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. Quote, he who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. And I am telling you this now, Jesus says, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Again, a proclamation for Judas and for the disciples. 
Here Jesus points to his identity as the one sent from God, the Messiah. Later as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorry and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him that he had not been born. And again Judas answered him, saying, Is it I, Lord? He said to him, you have said so. And of course, we must recount, again, many, many proclamations that our Lord gave to his disciples, including Jesus, that he had come to suffer, die, and rise again for them and for the entire world, to forgive their sins and restore the kingdom of God. Even though Judas heard this directly from Jesus, he doesn't go to Jesus to confess his sin that he had betrayed in innocent blood. No, he goes to the chief priests. And they express a lack of sympathy and concern. When he tells them that he has betrayed innocent blood, they say, what's that to us? That's your problem, basically. Right? But Judas never goes to the one who could speak a word of peace and pardon, who could calm his internal struggle and that thinking about what he had done. And wrought by guilt, remorse, and anger, Judas does not believe that Christ's innocent blood could forgive his sins, would be shed to forgive his sins. Instead, he takes his own life. Perhaps he thought he deserved nothing but punishment, nothing but death. That is a heavy burden. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we all deserve punishment and death for our sins. But this is exactly why God the Father sent His Son Jesus in the first place. All along, our Lord speaks to Judas on many occasions to try to change this disciple's destructive course. Knowing what the scriptures said and knowing what Judas will do, Jesus still doesn't give up. He still warns. He still proclaims. He still speaks and he still loves. The problem does not lie with limited attempts by our Lord Jesus loving Judas and proclaiming the gospel to him, but instead lies in a stubborn refusal to receive and believe in Jesus as the Christ, as God's uh, payment for all of our sins, that he was punished for all of our sins. Jesus is the sacrifice that God required and sent, the one that fully satisfied the law's demand for perfection and the law's demand for the shedding of blood and death. We may be angry with ourselves concerning our sin. And we should turn away from that sin. We should repent of that sin. And in the midst of it, we might feel remorse, regret, and shame. That's the law doing its work. We might even shed tears. But hurting ourselves in destructive ways takes our eyes off of Jesus, who bore our sins and suffering upon the tree of Calvary. When it comes to punishment and guilt for sin, all that burden has been placed on our Lord. All of it. Punishing ourselves through self-harm will not make proper amends to God. It will not right wrongs. But the death of Jesus and His blood and His resurrection did, fully and completely, once for all time and once for all people. Taking our lives, harming ourselves against the fifth commandment, it's against God's will. Taking things in our own hands to meet our justice is also against God's will. So we ask that God would take our lives in other ways, not to end it violently by our own hands, but to transform it, suffering, death, and resurrection of His Son. And that is exactly. 
what God does. We ask the Lord to take our old Adam, the life we used to live, of sin and death, and drown that old man so that we may rise to new life, the life that our Savior has won for us and given us, the life that our Savior gave us where we died to sin in our life to God. Instead of seeking to punish ourselves, brothers and sisters in Christ, I exhort you to give thanks to God and His mercy and His steadfast love that He punished the perfect Holy One in our place. Instead of viewing our lives through the lens of human anger, let us view our lives through the lens of God's compassion through our Lord Jesus Christ. The great hymn states this, Take my life, Lord, let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in faith. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will continue with our prayer of the church. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Help us, O Lord, this night to live without sin. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and let our cry come to you. Lord, in our hour of need, we lift up our cares to you, knowing that you hear us even before we give them to you all together. We lift up to your care and keeping those who have requested our prayers, including Pat, Don, Lynn, Monterey, Ray, Sue, Teresa, Heather, Betty, Jean, Stacy, Claudia, Tracy, Mary, and Ken, Dennis, Rose, Emily, and other missionaries, Ken Taylor, Marilyn, Judy, Lisa, Mark, Annie, Harold, Victoria, Shirley, Irene, Al, Deanna, Grant, Rako, Renee, Carter, Julie, Peg, Chelsea, Oliver, Maverick, Darlene, Tom, Dennis, Denise, and Pam, Lloyd and Skip, Renee, as well as Sloan, Pam, Randy, Michelle, Brady, Cameron, and Amy, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. Grant to them, Lord, peace during their difficulties, and a surefire hope, Lord, that you are with them in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Grant them healing according to your good and gracious will, and surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.